How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, and Sundays, 6 p.m. Eastern. Time change today. I have no idea what time it is anymore. My wife went away. She's in New Orleans for a bachelorette party, and I've had the kids all alone for two days. I'm not complaining. I'm used to it. But I have no idea where I am, what day it is, what time it is. There's a time change. A lot is going on today, but I'm glad to be here with you guys. I love the Sunday edition of the show because I host it. Listen, Brian's great. Mike's great, but I like my Sundays. But a lot to talk about today, obviously. Uh, the big story here, uh, two terrible, terrible stories uh, coming out of Friday. Big E suffers a broken neck on SmackDown Live. We're going to go into this uh, I, terrible, terrible timing, terrible, terrible news for you know anything like this. Uh, luckily, no spinal damage, but we'll talk about this a little bit more. But his C1 and his C6, not looking good. Scott Hall, this came out today, uh, PW Insider. Scott Hall is hospitalized. A week ago, he went in for hip surgery and... Apparently, he had a blood clot that traveled. He had three heart attacks. And according to PW, let me find the story here. I just want to make sure. Uh, according to PW Torch, Scott Hall's on life support. This is wild. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Uh, it's, it's always a fear when you go in for surgery that something like this could happen. Scott has had... A uh, series of health issues, obviously. I think anybody that's followed his career has, knows about uh, some of the health issues that he's had in the past. I, I believe he had a heart issue a couple of years ago. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that there is a full recovery here from this. Terrible story, but we do have a lot of pro wrestling to talk about. Louis Dan Gore joining me when we come back. Sport, give me sport.com. Lead wrestling journalist over there is going to be joining me to talk about all the WWE stories and everything else happening in pro wrestling when we come back. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here, hanging out with you guys for the next hour, talking all things professional wrestling. You know, I like to change it up here every week. I like to bring in somebody different, maybe someone a little familiar to you, maybe someone not so familiar to you. But this dude is familiar to me. He's all over my Twitter timeline. I'm going back and forth with him constantly. We're all talking. Louis Dan Gore, give me sport.com. He's the lead wrestling journalist over there, talking all things WWE, doing AEW stuff. Louis, what's going on, man? Man, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you uh, whenever. I think this is the first time we've ever done a show together, though. Um, first time, yeah. I mean, but you've done, you, not, I you've done a show with a lot of my friends. You know, so I was like, I got to have Louie on. Yeah. We got to talk about wrestling. We got to do this on a Sunday. Uh, I I have to tell you, though, I, I I think it's it's cool to have different perspectives on, especially when you talk about pro wrestling, because a lot of it is opinion based. A lot of that is personal mm -hmm. preference on what you like. So I'm like, you know what? Let's get Louie on. I think this is awesome. Uh, I know that you've been pretty busy covering a lot of stories the last. God, I think it's all of us. It's been a it's been a very uh, chaotic, I guess, WrestleMania season. I'm going to call it right from January to yeah. April uh, is when th there's so much going on. And now adding another company in the mix, you know, actively making moves. I think uh, it's even busier. But I want to talk to you about this. This this came out today. Uh, I, I saw it this morning when I got up and I and I was like, you know, you, you hear stories like this. Uh, Scott Hall on life support uh, suffered three heart attacks and you kind of want to do some due diligence and you want to. See, like, is this just some sort of internet rumor? But it's not. PW Torch reported, uh, I saw it this morning, I'm not sure if they posted it this morning or last night, that Scott Hall had suffered three heart attacks, uh, and this was caused by a blood clot getting loose after hip surgery, which actually, I, I, I don't know if you mentioned this to me, but I was talking to somebody else earlier this, today, and they said that this is common, this happens. Uh, generally, they, they're able to catch it, but this is... Uh, terrible this is devastating uh what do you i mean is there anything more to add to this uh other than what we have uh from pw torch 
I mean, no, like, like, like what you said, it was, it was one of those things where you almost hope it's just someone's been given some tough information or it's a hoax or, or something that it's not what it's all made out to be and you hope it's all wrong. But, um, yeah, I mean, kind of seeing Sean Walkman, I saw posted something, The Rock posted something. So it's getting to the wrestlers as well, who obviously would know whether it's true or not, and this all looks very true, but it, 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 it's incredibly sad. It's incredibly sad. It, incredibly Going sad. Going for something so routine. Yeah, you Going know. Going for something so routine as j- j- just, just hip surgery and then come out with, with being on life support, it's, it's rough. Yeah, uh, devastating. I believe he's in Georgia. In uh, I'm not I'm not sure where exactly, but he's in Georgia, and uh, this is terrible. Uh, you hate hearing these stories. I'm not sure. I, I believe he had a pacemaker uh, put in a number of years ago. Uh, you know, and this is a guy. I think we we're all very familiar with his uh, on screen life and his off screen life. Uh, the stories are endless, and the last couple of years he seemed to have turned it around somewhat, and his life was uh, a much he was in a much more better positive place, and it's you know terrible to see this. So uh, our thoughts go out to obviously Scott Hall and his family. I'm sure there's gonna be more news that comes out post uh, what we're doing right now, and and tomorrow I'm sure we'll have some more information. And obviously Dave tonight on Wrestling Observer Radio with Brian will probably have some news on this, so definitely check it out. Uh, another going from one. Bad story to another one, and and I never, I hate doing this. Uh, this is the first time I think I've had like two back to back terrible stories to talk about. But on Friday, Big E landed on his head while taking a belly to belly from Rich Holland on SmackDown. He fractured his C one and his C six vertebrae. No spinal damage, thank God. I, I mean, listen, there's no. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, growing up here in New York, a lot of my friends became professional athletes, uh, you know, football, baseball. Uh, you, there's no good neck injury. <laughs> I mean, I think I don't think you have to play sports or even know medicine to understand that. Uh, it's, it does a number, but his C1, C6 fractured. He will not need surgery, but there's no timeable uh, date for recovery or, or what the process is. Louis, I know that you 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 probably have been covering this uh, since Friday. Uh, bad news, man, and, and terrible. It happened live on TV. Uh, he gave a thumbs up going out. Uh, what do you what do you have on this? So, yeah, I mean it's it's so so like again you you just you, you go to watch SmackDown and you don't expect this to happen. But was watching the show and it looked rough, and you can tell obviously the way WWE does things, if they think something isn't right, they won't show a replay. But for example, when Mad Cat Moss landed on his neck at they the Nation Chamber, you were seeing yeah. replay. So you're like, okay, they're not going to show it if something's gone wrong. But the fact they didn't show a replay, it was like, okay, worrying. You see like reports coming out, he gave the thumbs up. So you're saying, okay, hopefully, I mean, he can move his, his hands at least and his, his, yeah. his, his arms at least, which is good. But then I actually went to bed and woke up to the news that he'd, he'd broken his neck. I mean, it's it's again, it's as you said, there there is no good neck injury, especially for a guy. Uh, I've interacted with him several times. I've interviewed him in person. He's a great guy, and it's such a shame it had to happen to anyone, but especially such a great guy. But you mentioned about the, there being no good neck injuries. This seems like the news coming out is probably. As good as we could have hoped for, as good maybe. As you could hope. No yeah, ligament falling. damage. Yeah. No spinal cord damage. He can move all of his digits. And he seems, obviously, Biggie is a positive guy. We've seen him be positive in his social media videos. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a long road to recovery, one that we're likely not going to know how it's going to turn out for, for, for weeks and months. I wouldn't expect him on TV, probably even this year, or if it is towards the end of the year. But again, there, just, there's no time on it. Neck yeah. is certainly not something that you, that you want to mess about with. So obviously, again, thoughts go out to him, prayers go out to him. But it's just again, two two rough stories to cover, particularly particularly this one concerning. I mean, both both are awful, but this one concerning Big E, it's just it, it's more. Fuck, we saw everything. What well, happened on TV? Yeah, just, you saw it on TV. You know, yeah. I I I do have to say he he has such positive. He has such a positive outlook on everything, and, and this is known about him. Uh, I think he tweeted or, or said, he goes, I couldn't have asked for a better place to be in for an injury like this because he was in Alabama and it has, you know, obviously uh, WWE's one of their lead guys for surgeries 
uh, is over there. I I think, uh, I I you know the, the these are not normal, you know, everyday people, right? The, the way that they train and they take care of their bodies and their workouts. Uh, if if you are going to recover and return uh, from this type of injury, obviously a professional wrestler or a professional athlete, their bodies do things that that normal bodies can't. Uh, we've seen this in the yeah. past. We've seen John Cena return. Uh, even Drew McIntyre returning from his uh, injury that he had a couple months ago. He came very quickly because they're, they're almost superhuman of sorts. You know, the, they're able to the things that they put their bodies through they're they're building muscle around it and obviously biggie is a big dude um i hope he, i i hope we see a quick recovery but you know this says something and and not that he took it wrong or or it was the move was it, it, these things happen right and you know a couple of weeks ago louis and i and i don't know if you tweeted about this also but you know that bobby lashley match where brock was suplexing him and more and more lashley's taking those bumps on his neck uh, you know, we've kind of evolved and, and we've changed the way that these, these we, as it, as if I, I take these ridiculous moves <laughs> in wrestling, we, we've seen, uh, the placement of taking a bump go more towards the shoulder. You don't want to take it on your neck, but occasionally you see these guys for more dramatic impact, take it a little bit higher. Maybe this is a little bit of a, a rude awakening for a lot of people saying like, listen, maybe I shouldn't be taking this on my neck. Yeah, I mean it, it's a scary thing, and I'm sure I'm sure like like you said, it, it looks a lot better when someone does land on their neck in terms of the replays and everything. It just makes it look more brutal. But I don't know about you, I would much rather see it look less brutal. Everyone land on their back and their yeah. shoulders, but 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 not land on their neck. But yeah, I mean accidents happen in wrestling. It is a reminder that yes, I mean as you know, as a wrestling fan, as some of the comments on wrestling, I'm sure you sometimes get the comments from your friends and people you you might know from other areas of life that go with the classic oh it, it's it's wrestling it's fake thing but this is a just just a reminder that things happen things will happen and yeah. bad 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 injuries can happen so uh, again, from, from just, even simple moves you know like you see these suplexes mm. daily on tv mm. it's you know it, 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 it is rough but it I mean, is rough I, yeah Hey, we're going to come back from this break. A lot to talk about. Steve Austin, uh, some changes there. And Cody, the mystery of where's Cody? We're going to talk about that. Louie joining me. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday Edition. I'm Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarian here. Talking all things professional wrestling. You know, a lot's going on. Uh, Steve Austin news. Let's go into that one. You know, I, I have the the last two weeks, man, unbelievable talking about wrestling. I never thought I'd be talking about a Steve Austin return again after 19 years, but here we are. And a lot of mystery around mm -hmm. this match of sorts. So we finally saw the video package debut this week online. It was a noon release. They released it on social media of Steve Austin in his, you know, quad going down the desert and stops and he cuts this great promo on Kevin Owens. And he says it's been 19 years since he's stomped a mud hole into somebody at WrestleMania, which is not really true. You know, we're forgetting about the New Day stuff. We're forgetting about a lot of the other stuff, but, you know, kind of alluding at a match. And he didn't say it's not a match. He didn't say it is a match. It's going to be something. And per Dave Meltzer, it, uh, Dave reported that it's a plan. They, they've planned a fight scene, which is always kind of what I thought it would be. And, you know, I, I don't think anybody expects Steve at 57, 58 years old after not wrestling for 20, almost 20 years to come in there and do a 15 minute match with Kevin Owens or even a 10 minute match. But you know what? I thought we're going to get something maybe under 10 some sort of brawl, some sort of fighting happening on Jim Ross's podcast. And this is what Jim said. And it seems like it was more speculation than anything else. I don't know. I'm curious what, what the viewers think. And, 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 you know, I have not dissected Jim's words, but Jim pretty much said that Austin is not happy about the, about the planning of his main of uh, his mania spot and quote, he doesn't seem enthusiastic about it. Louie, what's going on with this? <laughs> did they did they mess yeah. this up? I don't know, man. It's so difficult. And I'm sure that 
the, the initial reports that they wanted a match, and I don't think they were probably able to get that over the line, which is which is okay. I mean, it's it's. Well, I'll probably... tell you what was said to me. I was never told that the match is happening. I was told this is the closest that the company has ever gotten to Steve having a match. Yeah, I mean. I get. I, I. I. To be honest, I was never told anything. I was never. I, I never really asked about it. I mean, it came out the same time as the Cody news, and that was always the one that kind of yeah was I, I was asking about. But um, from this anyway, what what was most interesting to me was the, the the phrasing of the things that he said in in his in his promo, which was great, by the way. Did remind yeah, you just great how promo. great Austin is on the mic. But he was like, speaking about things being awoken in him that had been asleep for nineteen years and. What people are saying, I, listen, we know that sometimes history can be rewritten into a way that it's not kind of, they can say, oh, he hasn't done this in 19 years when we all know he has. But yeah. I think this is the most physical he'll have been in that period. I'm expecting, like, like, like kind of what Dave said, a bit of a brawl, a bit of maybe something. It, it will be like an entertaining KO show segment, and it will end with him drinking beers, having stunned uh, Owen. Gonna yeah, it ha I mean, I that's, that's the ending. It's always going to be a brawl. It was yeah. always going to be a fight of sorts and not, you know, a, a classic match. But listen, for me as a fan of Steve Austin, you know, Attitude Era, that's what I grew up on. I mean, I grew up on the 80s stuff, but the Attitude Era is my peak teenage years. And uh, in the same way that a lot of teens connected with pro wrestling, I did too. Uh, I, I think to be able to get something that's a story internal, he uses the stunner also. He's taking shots at Texas. They've done everything to set this up. And I got to tell you, not a bad setup at all. They've done it the right way. It's just a matter of what is Steve going to commit to? And it seems like, you know, they're leaving the door open to see maybe at the last minute they're going to get a they're going to get an official match. Listen, you could ring that bell. It doesn't matter. Right. Is Steve going to come out with the with the short shorts, the denim shorts? Is he going to come out with the trunks? That's what it comes down to. I, I think it's just going to come out. Does he wear the knee brace? I hope so. Give it a big fight feel with those knee braces. I think that this is the closest we're going to get ever. Uh, and listen, we don't know. Maybe he goes in there. He does whatever ridiculous thing that he, they're doing. And he feels pretty good about it. And this maybe leads to something else. Or he kind of finally closes that chapter for the fans. Not so much for him. Because, uh, I mean, Louie, you've heard him say it too. He's totally content with not wrestling. So something changed. It's probably, you sp spoke about it closing it for fans and for him. I think probably for Vince as well. Probably for Vince as well, This yeah. will be, like, I'm sure that uh, him, the show being in Texas, two nights, them selling it as the most stupendous WrestleMania ever. They the want to have everything yeah. they can have. Stupendous. Austin, Austin is, he, listen, he, you, you'll know, I'll know. When I've written articles about him, they've done well. They've got that mainstream attention that if I write an article about AJ Styles and Edge, as great as a match that is and as great as a match that'll be, we both know that Austin's going to get more buzz. Of He'll course, get more yeah. buzz from your mainstream sites. WWE showed that on SmackDown when they did that, the kind of the video package where you see the headlines from all of the big sites. It was on Forbes. It was everywhere. So I get why they want to do it. I think this is, we'll probably see him for the first time, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's ever been much, at, if, if anything, where Austin's come back and stunned someone, but they've given him something back. Yeah. I think that we might have it a little, be a little bit more back and forth, but obviously, again, the ending of Austin stunning him and drinking the beers, it, it, it's written and it will be great, and I'm sure it will probably be one of the loudest reactions that you get on that. Oh, and those fans are going to go nuts in that building. You know, 60,000 or so, whatever whatever they have on that on that night. Uh, they, they're going to lose their mind. Kids are going to love it because their dads are losing their mind. And every, it, it's going to be a fun experience for people in that building. I, I, whatever they do, I'm sure it's going to work out fine. It's going to be WrestleMania. People are going to be into it. Regard, you know, do, do we realistically want to see Steve Austin have a, you know, a long real real and i'm using hand quotes for people listening on the radio a real wrestling match no not really but you can do whatever you want you know a couple minutes here a couple minutes there and you have a whole segment that that's as good as a match so we'll see what happens with that so something else you know that kind of took over the steve austin story when it first came out and this cody debacle the cody verse is still continuing to saturate pro wrestling news um uh, 
there was no contract signed yet. So about a week ago, it came out that there was a snag in the signing. I think Cassidy, uh, Cassidy uh, Haynes wrote the story that he had heard that the deal was falling apart. If so, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in the blanks here. I don't want to. I don't want to misquote him. But he pretty much said that the deal was not. It was not a done deal yet, and things were happening that not in the positive of signing him. Dave mentioned that there was no contract signed. He was penciled in for Seth for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Man, I think that's a great match to have at WrestleMania, and there, that window of opportunity for WrestleMania is closing. Not that not that the deal is going to close. They're not going to sign him. I don't. I, I haven't heard anything as far as that goes. When I called to confirm, uh, you know, when I spoke to someone at WWE last week, they gave me the very typical, there's no truth to that story. Things are fine. Nothing bad is happening. But I think more people have confirmed that the deal has kind of stalled out a little bit here. Or maybe, maybe they're working everybody here. The deal is signed. They're in Jacksonville tomorrow. What a what better place to debut them as a as a great you know dig at AEW if you're WWE? What do you think? Tomorrow's the big tomorrow's raw's big. Tomorrow's raw is if he's there. If he's there, huge. It, it's if, he, if he, listen, if it, it, it's more if he's not there, it's not happening. <laughs> if he well, I mean, you what, could I mean you could work the deal out possibly, and you don't do WrestleMania, you do something after WrestleMania. You know, and, and, and you know what's funny? And here's something that's really funny here. And I want to I wanna know if you've heard the same thing. Normally, when I hear about a guy coming in, right, AEW side or WWE side, I never hear so much about the camp and the team and less about the talent. I have heard zero about Cody and what Cody wants and what Cody's ass. Like, normally you hear those rumors come in, true or false, it doesn't matter, it, it's... You know, it's the journalist's job. Not that I'm a journalist, but it's the journalist's job to kind of figure out and and to better understand, you know, yep. what is the truth and what isn't. I have heard zero from WWE about Cody specifically. Every word that has been used is Cody's camp. That to me, that's the first time that I mean, listen, a lot of guys use a team, man, uh, agents, managers. You got a whole thing, but I never personally have been told. You know, so and so. You know, this one's camp or that one's camp. I always just hear that. Oh, they're working on the deal with Cody, whatever. Why has it become such yeah. a big deal that it's the camp or it's the team and less Cody? I mean, Cody is whether whether people don't w- want to admit it or not. He's got a reality show. He, he's got yeah, he's a star. TBS. He's a star. So there are probably things beyond just what does Cody want to do at WrestleMania that have to be considered. Um. I think it's also kind of smart from Cody's camp to play it that way because it does make him feel more like a big deal. If you hear, oh, Cody's people have been in talks with WWE, it, ma- it makes him feel like like a big deal. Yeah. But I mean, sure, uh, Sean, has, Sean Mossap has spoken about this. Dave Meltz has spoken about this. Cody's being very coy. They've both gone on the record to say that they have spoken to Cody. And he's, he's I think Sean asked him something and he sent him a picture of his dogs. Um, <laughs> and, and Dave, I, I think... I think Sean said that in a in a fight for report, and Dave said that he's spoken to Cody, who's given nothing away. So this could be a surprise, and it could eventually happen. Uh, maybe on Raw this week, but I mean the fact best that kept secret nothing in wrestling. Hap- the best exactly. kept secret on wrestling. Exactly. Uh, we'll we'll pick this up where we left it off after this break. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back. Andrew Zarian here. We're talking Austin. We're talking Cody. We're talking all these debuts happening. They got to do it tomorrow if they're doing it, man. I, 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 they, that time frame. And listen, we were talking out during the break, Louie and I. I mean, it, it, does it have more umph doing it tomorrow, going into WrestleMania, Seth's opponent, or you do something the night after WrestleMania? And and I mean, what what's more valuable? What do you think, Louie? Night after WrestleMania or Monday? I'd. I'm. I understand the appeal of Night After WrestleMania from a fan's perspective. It's the show, traditionally, the biggest things happen. It's supposed to be a reset, and what's a bigger reset than the AW EVP coming? But if you want to sell tickets for WrestleMania, if you want to sell subscriptions to Peacock, WWE Network, it's getting Cody on the card, getting that buzz going into WrestleMania. 
because we spoke earlier about the, the, what, what the mainstream sites pick up, the Austin return, yeah. things like that. One thing they will also pick up is, is Cody coming to WWE. Um, the buzz has died down from what it was. Um, but when it's a big deal, and this is a big deal for Cody, things happen. Uh, yeah. I know that his show, the Go Big show, uh, ended on Thursday. So he's looks like he's officially done with TBS and Warner Media. Um, so, I mean, as far as we know. So I see if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on Monday uh, or tomorrow on Raw because there is nothing for Seth right now. And I suspect that's where it will go. But you look at what thing like kind of what's been teased for Raw. And there's been nothing like even what's happening next. For Seth. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it that's a make... little bit of a problem, right? It does. And it's almost like if, if you knew he was coming in tomorrow, you'd be like, oh, what's next for Seth Rollins? And then you'd be like, OK, I'm going to tune in because it could be Cody. The yeah. fact they're not teasing anything, and they could they could tease it an hour before the show as as they as they do. But Listen, I, I, I know, hope man. for his I'm, sake he gets I the go deal that he wants. You know, uh, for Cody's sake, he took a big gamble here, uh, and, and he, you know, you you left the company. You were very unhappy. You went and you traveled the world and you did your thing and you and you were one of the you know founding guys to AEW and starting this you know competitor. I mean, at the end of the day, they are. They got a deal on, on on Warner Media, on TNT, and TBS. A lot of big accomplishments here, and to leave what you 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 know what you're pretty comfortable at, uh, it kind of shows. You know, he could have sat in that office and, and taken his paycheck, and he could have gone on TV and done something cool every now and then. And but obviously, he wants more, and he wasn't going to get that with AEW, and he took a big risk. So I hope for his sake, uh, it, it happens, and we'll find out tomorrow. May, we'll find out tomorrow if he's showing up. Interesting stuff. Yeah, SmackDown. I, I do think tomorrow. I do think tomorrow. You is think the so? One. If it tomorrow, happens, tomorrow if it's has happening, to be the it's one. tomorrow. Yeah. SmackDown had some pretty interesting things here, and I, and and I'm so sorry to talk to you about Pete Dunn right now. <laughs> uh, Brock Lesnar chased Paul Heyman around the building. I don't want to go into the whole detail because it's it was a couple days ago. But the Pete Dunn story upset a lot of people. Pete Dunn is now on SmackDown, and he's known as Butch. And he's paired with Rich Holland and Sheamus. What did you make of Butch? It's a stupid name. It's a very stupid name. I, I mean, understand why, why WWE changed his name. I mean, you could call him Pete. Again, again, I, I get why WWE changes names. So I'm not even upset at them changing Pete Dunn's name. It wouldn't be what I would do. I would keep his name as Pete Dunn. But if you want to change his name, as you say, call him Pete. Call him Dunn. Call him something that's just not butch give him a normal name yeah this is like the gun not, not saying that anyone called <laughs> it, it is it is but it's 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 almost like, and the annoying thing as well the idea of pete down with rich holland and sheamus is pretty exciting i, I quite like that idea. you like the team it, it's quite i think it's it's i mean as a brit it's always nice to see kind of your fellow brits together. yeah i think they're all they all work a similar kind of hard-hitting style pete's obviously the best wrestler out there. I think Sheamus is great as well. Really has had a great kind of going on two years now. I think that there is a lot of potential for this group. But again, you're going to have that. It's going to be an uphill battle for, for Pete to get over as Butch. But it's, it, it's one mean, of those things oh, where Peter, think it's going to happen. What's wrong with Peter? You know, you what 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 what's and, fascinating to me, and this is the thing that that's you know like. We have forgotten WWE used to do this a lot, right? Uh, we've seen it where somebody has come in under a different name. They get injured. They go away and they come back as a whole new person. We've seen this happen with guys like Kane, uh, you know, early on in his career. But I don't think we've seen this happen in, in uh, I can't think of an established guy in the company, someone that has been established as Somebody, not saying that they're they're on the main roster established, but Pete Dunne was very much known to the WWE universe, known to non NXT yeah. fans because he's done stuff on the main roster. They've presented him as this tough as nails, you know, the bruiser weight, and this guy's tough, and he's this, and they've created an identity for him for years. They've created an identity. And yeah, I guess uh, and now like they, they, you know, if he had gone away for like six years or seven years, 
And then he comes in and he looks different and he acts different. Okay, you know what? You're just, he's a different guy. But this guy was on TV weeks ago. Last week. Mm. You can watch him on NXT. People are very familiar with him. You've sold toys. You've put him on pay-per-views. You've told me that this guy is legitimate and now you're just making him into Butch. I ask why. I get, I get that they want to control the name and the branding and the marketing. But marketing Pete Dunne, in this, in this scenario... Uh, marketing Pete Dunne is a way better way to market than, than Butch. Because I don't know what kid is going into the store and they're like, no, I have to get the Butch Series 1 from yep. Mattel. I have to get the Butch Butch doll. Butch action figure. Yeah. I don't know. You Do you... Uh, uh, is it that it's a lack of creativity that's upset, upsetting people? Because I think it's more that. It's a lack of creativity with the names rather than anything else. Yes. I think so. I think it is that kind of, of all the names you come up with that. But I think it's also, it's also that, why fix what isn't broken? There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. Yeah, but they don't I guess they have it a does very come different from, mentality. They have a very different mentality. Of course. They, ha know? they, they have a mentality of, we don't want Pete Dunne being on the main roster for two, three years, his contract coming up, and them going to AEW as Pete Dunne because we don't own that name. And then him essentially, and AEW essentially profiting off Three years of WWE exactly. exposure. Yeah. But it's typical. What, I guess what you kind of spoke about, Pete being established, though, I'm not going to challenge that because I agree. One no, of the challenge it. Champions, challenge it if you are. Not even a challenge. It's more from WWE's point of view. Do you think they sit there and go, of the two million people that watch SmackDown, how many know who Pete does? Uh, of, the, of, the of the two and a half million, I think you're absolutely right. Listen, I, I agree with you. I know how they think. And it and it has that's one aspect of it. The other one is yeah. what everything needs to be marketable. Every character needs something to market. That stupid hat that he's wearing, the suspenders he's wearing, yeah. that's for marketing purposes. Uh, everything yeah. about that. I mean, uh, they're gonna they're gonna sell that ridiculous thing. You know, they'll, they'll go to the U. Listen, they're going to the UK, right? They're gonna have a big stadium show. I, I'm willing to bet that they're gonna sell those stupid hats. And you know what? It's going to sell. Mm -hmm. And they're going to sell out of mm -hmm. those hats. And it's going to justify everything that they think. And then they're going to look at the fans and say, huh, you know what? It's just like that Lily doll. Fans hated it. Yeah. Yeah. But here you go. <laughs> it's sold out. But you couldn't get it. What, 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 when, when we speak about fans, we speak about the fans on Twitter. Very different. And often, I, very different. we are a very small minority. Of, yeah. the, of the of the overall WWE fan base, and I think I could see a situation where Pete Dunne's in a match, and the crowd do chant Butch. It's very uh, you know what easy they will. to chant. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I, you it's know, a one. I, I don't agree with it. I'm just trying to think from WWE's point of view. Why would you do that? But it's like you know what you could see them chanting like Butch, Butch, Butch. You could see them doing it. So yeah, from it, WWE's point of view. I get not what it's not what I would have done at all. And if I did change his name, I would try and come up with something, even just a generic name something that's else. a bit boring. Yeah. Well, this it's is Triple H's NXT is officially gone. You know, this is the final. Is Tommaso Ciampa going to be somebody else? Are they going to change his name? <sighs> I you don't know, know man. But I will say one thing as well. Pete was very much a Triple H guy. Oh, 100%. H, yeah. Oh, yeah. Triple H loved him. Everyone I've spoken to. Triple H, like he does Triple H's guy. So this could Very just be another company. example of maybe trying to change something that's, that's Triple H's. Yeah. Listen, I think it's a very different developmental. I think it's a very different uh, everything. Uh, it's a, I, I, when, I, when I saw that his name was, I saw first and then I watched. And I think it was, it was far worse seeing it online than to actually see it. Uh, you know, when he came out and they announced him as Butch, I, I, I just, I find it, you know, he already has a lot of uphill battles going into that main roster. You're just adding another, you know, just another thing for him to overcome. I hope he does. I hope he does really well there. Uh, AW Rampage, I just want to go into this very quickly because there were some key points here. Darby <laughs> Allen defeated uh, uh, Mark Quinn with Isaiah Cassidy. 
this this prompted the Hardys to come out after this. I got to tell you, man, there's something really cool about Matt and Jeff together again. I I, I have it's to awesome. say, it's awesome. It, I I'm very I, I'm excited to see what they do with Jeff as a singles. I'm excited to see what they do as a mm -hmm. tag team because there's so much that they could do. Uh, we also saw Keith Lee defeat QT Marshall and the debut. Uh, Jamie Hayter also uh, defeated uh, Mercedes Martinez and Swerve Strickland defeated Tony Nese. Very good match. Swerve's there. I think that's a great addition for them. And next week, Rampage is going to be delayed. It's approximate start time is 1130 p.m. Eastern. Because of the NCAA basketball tournament happening. March Madness here in the U.S. Uh, I, you know, I, I got to tell you back, back to Hardy really quickly. Um, I hope that he has a great run here because he's a real good addition to have and to kind of present. Listen, I'm looking forward to that CM Punk match, but I'm also looking forward to all those tag team matches. What would you, what are you looking more forward mm -hmm. to seeing the tag matches, the combination of tag matches they're going to have, or him and Punk possibly doing something again, or him and MJF doing <sighs> something. There's a lot of options. I mean, like, I can only imagine what MJF would say to him in a promo. Like, oh my God. Think, think about the material you've got yeah. there. He probably, I think AW, listen, he seems like he'd be very happy there. He's working with Matt again, traveling with Matt. He'll be hopefully happy there and healthy. And that's the main thing. Um, I mean, WWE wanted him back. So, uh, reportedly, anyway. That says a lot as well. Uh, I mean, I think he was going to be set for like a universal title. Well, program with roman yeah i mean so they it's, wanted it's him back <laughs> they wanted him back after it was it, the, his drug test came back clean yeah uh and and i believe they wanted to put him in the hall it was just him in the hall of fame and not matt so yeah i spoke Crazy. to matt about that in an interview he was like yeah it, it wouldn't have happened just, just him but yeah i'm excited for the tag matches I, i've always been a tag guy them versus ftr them versus the young bucks again there's so many tag teams in aw seeing the hardy boys do like a final tag team run yeah, that, I, I, listen, it, it's. It, I think if you do one final run and you do it the right way, you have them and you have them in the Bucks, you know, on TV. You do it. Do, I think their only other match was prior to all this was uh, Ring of Honor during WrestleMania weekend, the the weekend that they debuted yeah. in WWE. So uh, I think yeah. a lot of great opportunities for tag team matches, and especially with younger guys too. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday. Show's almost over here. But some more news. Um, early in the week, I was told Sid for the Hall of Fame. We're going to see if that happens. I was also told something funny about the Steiners. First, I was told the Steiners. Then I was told just Rick. And then I was told the Steiners. So I have no confirmation on the Steiners. But I was specifically told by somebody at WWE that Sid's in there this year. That's what I'm hearing. Not confirming what I'm hearing. Louie, you hung out with me. You did your first Wrestling Observer Live. I want to let people know they can find more info on you. Obviously, follow you on Twitter. But, and we have it right on the screen. But also, give me sport.com in the WWE section, the pro wrestling section. Uh, you are the lead wrestling journalist over there. Anything else coming up that you're going to be up to? Uh. There's a couple of interesting things which I can't reveal too much about now, but stay tuned to my Twitter because there's a couple of interesting video content things that are, that are in the works that will be coming up before WrestleMania, which will be a lot of fun. But yeah, I just want to say thanks, Andrew. Oh, Having me on man. was an absolute pleasure. Absolute uh, pleasure to chat today. No, man, absolutely. We got to do it again. Uh, I want to remind everybody, big Monday, we'll see if Cody shows up, right? Well, that's one thing. The other thing, Tuesday, I'll be back with Garrett for We're Live, pal. Thursday, I'll be back with Matt Men early morning. I do a 1030 Eastern. I do Matt Men on the, uh, on the Matt Men YouTube channel and everything else that's going on here at Wrestling Observer. And the convention happening in Las Vegas, double or nothing weekend. Head on over to F4WOnline.com to get more information on that. I'm going to be there. We're going to be doing shows. There's going to be a Q&A. Going to be a lot of stuff going on there. Dave's going to be there. Brian's going to be there. So find out more information, wrestlingobserver.com. And that's it for this week, guys. We'll be back next Sunday. I have another special guest next Sunday. I'll announce it during the week on my Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. That's it for this week, guys. See you all next time. Take care.